Hi, welcome to Camera Talk. I'm Janneke. And I'm Peter. And in this series of videos that we're bringing to you week by week, we're going to be helping you improve your photography and take better shots. This is the first in a series of videos. Today we're going to talk about memory cards. In the world of digital photography, these are used instead of film, memory cards. The important thing to realise is that your digital camera won't usually come with a memory card when you buy it. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of different types of memory cards and a lot of different speeds. So the choice depends on what camera you're buying and what you want to use it for. Shooting video with a DSLR is going to use the fastest cards. That's right. So if you're going to plan on shooting video with a digital SLR, you need a much faster card, say, compared to shooting stills on a compact camera. And compact cameras, they also shoot video. Don't they need the faster card? They don't need as fast a card for video because the file sizes and the quality of that video is nowhere near as high as it is on a digital SLR. So that means that you can use a slower card and a cheaper card, basically. So, how do I know which type of memory card I need for my camera? When you first buy the camera, you'll need one of these cards, a CF card or an SD card. You can work out which one from the manual or you can go to the camera manufacturer's website. Okay, now as far as putting the memory card into the camera, are there any considerations I need to make? When you open the memory card door on a DSLR, there's an arrow guiding you which way you should enter. On the compact flash cards, there's a row of holes for the prongs, so that's obviously the way into the camera. Go gently and you won't bend the pins inside which can lead to an expensive repair. The SD cards, they can only go in one way. Okay, so I've taken all my photos, now I want to look at them on my computer and maybe print out a couple. What's the best way to get them on my computer? In the box with the camera, you've got a USB cable. You can plug the camera and the USB cable to the computer and upload that way. Okay, so is that the best way to do it? Because I've heard some other photographers, um, you know, they use a memory card reader. So what's the advantage of that? During the transfer, you're relying on the camera's battery, which may not have enough charge to see out the whole transfer. You could lose some data, you could corrupt the card. The other cables, the Firewire, they're faster. However, a card read is recommended. Okay. Um, so after I've downloaded all the images to my computer, I would usually format the card to make sure that I get all the other images off it and that I've got a clean card ready to go again. Yeah, erasing the images off the card on the computer is probably not the best thing to do. You're inviting corruption. Uh, it's better to format it in the camera. Okay, so put it in the camera and then go to the menu and format it in the camera. Yeah. So I do a lot of travelling and when I go travelling I actually like to take quite a few memory cards rather than bringing a laptop around with me because that's just one less thing to carry. What do you do when you're travelling Peter? I do likewise. I like 4 gigabyte cards for the same reason. They fit onto a DVD but also because if I take one large memory card I could lose that card and everything's gone. Multiple seems to be a good safe backup. Uh, when shopping around for memory cards, um, be aware that on the internet there are some sellers selling uh, rip-off sand discs. Um, buy from a reputable buyer. Yeah, one thing to always check is with sand disc, they've actually got a list of authorised resellers. So to make sure you're getting a genuine card, just check with sand disc and they'll be able to tell you. So that wraps up today's talk about memory cards. If you want to learn more information, what can you do, Peter? Go to cameratalk.com.au. Thanks for watching.